Hi, and happy Columbus Day, hey, Matt. Huh? Oh, um, hey, other me, what's up, dude? You, you, you can't say that. I, I, I can't, I can't say what. Columbus Day. It, it's, it's not Columbus Day. What? What, what, what are you talking about? It's uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous. Oh, oh, okay. Um, since, since, since when? Since like I don't know. 1992. 1992? What are, you, what are you talking about? I wasn't even born yet, and I've always just celebrated Columbus Day. Well, it's it's on the calendar. But my my my, my Google Calendar says Columbus Day. Uh, yeah, it also says Indigenous Peoples Day. Huh. Okay. Um, I guess I never noticed. Uh, thanks. I guess. Yep. Okay, um... Hi, and happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a tough question, but we're gonna try and answer that today. To do that, we're gonna look at the different arguments for either side, the Columbus Day side and the Indigenous Peoples Day side, as well as the stories behind each of those. We're gonna be diving deep today into the significance of the holiday and what it really means to call the day one name or the other. So, with that said, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you haven't already. Let's do it. Christopher Columbus, for those of you who need a refresher, was an Italian explorer born in 1451. He's credited today with discovering the American continents, even though he really believed he had found a new route to the East Indies, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, just for some context, before Columbus's voyage, the majority of the world believed that sailing from Europe to Asia was only possible by going around Africa. Now that took a long, long time to do, and because there was just so much damn water and no land between Europe and Asia, sailing west just wasn't an option. Now Columbus, making a conversion error in his math, believed that the Earth was in fact much smaller than what was commonly believed. While the Greeks calculated that the circumference of the Earth was about 24,000 miles, Columbus calculated that it's about 16,000 miles. Um, however, different sources say that it was also 9,000 miles, which is way, way off, but the point is, it was wrong. Because of this error that he didn't really know about, he very strongly believed that he could, in fact, sail west from Europe to the East Indies. So, in 1485, after many years of careful research and planning, Columbus presented to King John II of Portugal his plan to sail west to reach Asia and he was rejected. Hard. The geography and cartography experts of the time completely rejected Columbus's calculations, and so the king was strongly advised against following through with Columbus's plan. Of course, Columbus was very confident and thus was not deterred. He was seriously, seriously convinced that his math was right and that the earth was the size that he calculated. With that, he left Portugal to go lobby support from the monarchy of Spain, King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabella. From 1486 to 1492, he fought for the sponsorship he was looking for, and after at least two official rejections from the monarchy in early 1492, he finally got what he was looking for. The king and queen finally accepted Columbus for a few reasons, most of which had something to do with fueling the economy, uh, expanding the Catholic Church through conquest, and obviously competing with the Kingdom of Portugal. So yeah, they figured it was worth a shot. That same year, on August 3rd, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, with a crew of about 90 men aboard three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, the latter of which was captained by Columbus himself. They sailed westward for 70 grueling days and found themselves in the Bahamas on October 12th. They started calling the locals who were in fact not from the East Indies the Indians because they seriously did not realize that they had just found whole new 
undiscovered land, or at least undiscovered for the Europeans. It actually wasn't until 1507, about a year after Columbus's death, that Amerigo Vespucci, another European explorer, was the one who realized that they were in previously undiscovered territory. And so, the continents were named after him, and not Columbus. And then, well, the rest is history. Columbus's expedition, though seriously flawed in its plan, was what led to the Western world making a connection with the American continents. This obviously changed the entire course of history forever. That's why in 1937, with fierce lobbying by the fraternal Catholic organization Knights of Columbus, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, declared October 12th a national holiday and called it Columbus Day, now the second Monday of October, to celebrate the great accomplishment of Columbus and his small fleet. The holiday also brought a great sense of national pride to the Italian-American population of the country, who were rather stigmatized in the 1920s and 30s. They sort of latched on to Columbus as this great Italian figure in American history. Uh, Even today, Italian-Americans feel very strongly about Columbus Day. It still holds some importance to them. So there's the basic explanation of Columbus and Columbus Day, the same one that I'm sure many of you have heard in high school. Seems, uh, it, it, it seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, um, no. There is, in fact, a lot of controversy around Columbus Day. What I originally wanted to do for this video was I wanted to go out and do some man-on-the-street interviews just to get some other varying opinions on Columbus Day. And I went out to do that, but I only got one guy. And that one guy explained what I think is a very popular opinion, a very controversial popular opinion about Columbus and Columbus Day uh, pretty well. So let's hear what he has to say. So my friend, what's your name by the way? Uh, my name's Haru. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on Christopher Columbus and Columbus Day? I really don't celebrate it at all. I mean, that was a time of turmoil for my people and my ancestors. And uh, yeah, those are my ancestors that got raped, massacred, brutalized. So why should that be celebrated by any race of people, especially considering America is supposed to be so-called built off, you know, in God we trust. So if you live by that, then uh, Christopher Columbus Day shouldn't be celebrated. you have an alternative to Columbus Day? Uh, not really, but you know, just to have passion when that day come on all the people that lost their lives, people that lost their culture, their languages, you got things like that don't even exist today in our culture. I mean, that's like being robbed of your whole spirituality. So, yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit more to Columbus and Columbus Day than just what they teach you in elementary school. And here's why. European settlers did not have a very uh, very nice relationship with the Native Americans, or the Indians, as they called them. Columbus and his crew specifically interacted very, very poorly with the Taino people who inhabited the Caribbean at the time. Records from Columbus's logbook, as well as those of his men, tell of horrific things happening to the natives as a result of Columbus's search for servants and slaves, gold and anything else that might please the king and queen. Hundreds and hundreds of native people were enslaved and brought to Spain to become servants. Women and children were assaulted. Men were forced to go and and find gold and were killed for defiance. And some even committed suicide because they just couldn't deal with the horrors that their people were facing. Columbus was actually pretty oppressive to his own people too. There are records of Columbus ordering for his own men to be tied up, beaten, whipped, and all for just trading some gold for food while on the brink of starvation. Actions like these actually led to Columbus and his brothers, who also held some authority, being investigated, arrested, and even imprisoned by Spanish authorities. They were then hauled back over to Spain, where they actually stood trial and eventually got acquitted. Anyway, let's get back on track. When Columbus and his crew were getting ready to head back to Spain after his first voyage, 
His ship, the Santa Maria, ran aground and thus became shipwrecked. The salvageable wood from the hull was then used to build the fort known as La Navidad, the first official sediment that they made. Columbus ordered 39 men to stay back at the fort, which they did. And when Columbus returned the following year, they were all dead, and the fort had been burned down. What had happened apparently was the men who were there went out in groups searching for gold while simultaneously assaulting the women of the island. This led to a revolt and eventual massacre of the entire fort and everyone in it. The massacre of these 39 Europeans was just the beginning, unfortunately. I'm sure we all know how Native Americans were treated uh, by European settlers. So this was just a sign of what was to come for hundreds and hundreds of years after. So there's our very rudimentary explanation of why so many people today do not celebrate Columbus Day. So, um, what's the alternative in that case? Do we just stop celebrating anything on October 12th? Or do we replace the holiday with something else? That was the conversation America started having in the 1970s and has continued to have to this very day. The conversation became a bit hotter when the movement to institute Indigenous Peoples Day as a nationally recognized holiday actually began. In 1992, 500 years after Columbus arrived in the Bahamas, uh, the town of Berkeley, California, became the first town in the U.S. to officially adopt the holiday. This was done as a counter-protest to then-President Ronald Reagan's plan to celebrate the quincentennial celebration of Columbus's first voyage. The plan was actually to recreate his three ships, the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria, and sail them all the way from Boston Harbor down through the Panama Canal into the Bay Area of California. But this plan didn't really sit well with the Native American population, especially those in the Bay Area, who saw their progressive town being held as the place to celebrate Christopher Columbus, and as they saw it, centuries of oppression and genocide. See, in, in 1990, two years before the 500 year anniversary, representatives from around 120 Native American tribes from both the northern and southern continents met in Ecuador for the first continental conference on 500 years of Indian resistance. That's what they called it. There, they declared the year 1992, the quincentennial year, to be a year of unity and liberation. So when I said that the conversation was hot in the early 1990s, I mean it was red hot. The movement to replace Columbus Day got even farther when many of California's native residents band together to create the Resistance 500, as they called it, a coalition whose purpose was to counter protest the celebration of the quincentennial. Native American residents of Berkeley led the coalition to gatherings of both native and non-native people who all inevitably voted, unanimously as a matter of fact, to affirm October 12th, 1992, as an international day of solidarity with indigenous people. Their voices were heard and picked up by Mayor Loney Hancock and the entire Berkeley City Council, who then on their own again voted unanimously to officially adopt Indigenous Peoples Day as a Berkeley holiday. Now, this official movement didn't really pick up much traction until 2014, when more city governments voted to adopt the holiday and remove Columbus Day from recognition, which started a trend that continued for the next several years and even to today. The number of cities that began participating in 2014 was just six. However, four years later in 2018, we saw over 40 city and state governments begin to recognize Indigenous Peoples Day or some other adjacent holiday. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot. And although it's not an official US holiday, in 2021, President Joe Biden issued a proclamation recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day. But the conversation obviously isn't over. There's still discourse between the more conservative or traditional supporters of Columbus Day 
and the more liberal or progressive supporters of Indigenous Peoples Day. So, just as a quick summation, the argument for celebrating Columbus Day is that, one, Columbus's discovery was what connected the Western world and the American continents, which until then were only theorized to exist. Two, their voyages kicked off many map-making developments. Three, the crew was undeniably courageous for setting off on such a journey as they did. Four, as a nation, we in the United States owe at least a little bit of gratitude to Columbus and his crew. Five, it represents the Italian-American population. Six, it has a connection between Spain, Italy, and the U.S. today. All right, and the argument for celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day is that, one, Christopher Columbus and many of the men he brought with him from Spain committed atrocities on the natives. Two, Columbus's arrival in the Americas began the era of European colonialism. Three, after Columbus's arrival, over the next 300 years, the Native American population dropped 75 to 90 percent. Four, Columbus Day sanitizes and often ignores the atrocities committed. Five, Columbus never stepped foot on the American continent. Six, Indigenous Peoples Day offers a celebration of Native resistance or just simply the Native American population. And seven, it also places a sense of unity and pride between Native American tribes themselves. So, which holiday do you celebrate? Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, or some other alternatives such as Italian Heritage Day, which is also a movement. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below because I would absolutely love to hear some more varying perspectives. And of course, thank you all so, so much for giving this video a watch. I, I love the support and I love every single one of you for showing it. With that said, if you feel like I've done a good job explaining all this and if you really feel like I deserve it, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. And if you already are subscribed, then thank you. Hey, this is uh, this is Matt during editing. Um, just want to let you all know, I think it's important to let you know anyway, uh, that it's probably going to be just a little bit until my next um, full length video. Because right now I am, um, I'm actually focusing my time and energy, or going to have to focus my time and energy on getting back to school. Right now I work 10 hour days as a professional welder, which I love doing. It's the best job I've ever had um, and I, I love it. I'm, ve I'm very grateful for it. But uh, because of my work schedule, I can really only allocate a small amount of time towards whatever I have to do after work. Um, so because of that, my focus can really only be put towards the highest priority thing which for me right now is my education. So um, with that said, I will be making more videos, just not until a while. I don't wanna give a timeline or have this expectation that I can't exactly meet because I don't know uh, exactly when that'll be. So I will be making more videos in the future. Uh, I'll just, I'll be sure to get on making new videos as soon as I can, just right now, gotta focus on on, um, on getting back to school. So, uh, with that said, back to the video. But anyway, um, thank you all again for watching. And don't forget to comment down below what you guys think about Columbus and Columbus Day. Feel free also to discuss it with others, but please, please, please keep it civil. So, with that said, God loves you all, and have a great day. Bye. What are your thoughts on Christopher Columbus? Very interesting, very interesting. Um, and do you think we should be celebrating him on Columbus Day? Thank you very much for your perspective.